Madden Football is the home of Super Bowl 56. And this historic matchup is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Bills and the Rams, and it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy, as it'll be the AFC champion Buffalo Bills taking on the NFC champions, the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, the Bills, a team trending upwards the last few years. Losers to KC in the AFC title game last season, but now in the Super Bowl seeking that elusive first ever title. And I like what you just said there about how they're trending. This feels like the 1990s again when this Bills franchise went to the Super Bowl four straight years. They came up empty each time, but now they think that after last year's appearance in the AFC title game, this could be the year. And let's face it, those 1990s teams, they're rooting for them in a big way, as well as this tremendous fan base. Meanwhile, the LA Rams, they are back in the Super Bowl for the second time in four years. Remember, they lost Super Bowl 53 to the Patriots in Atlanta, 13 to three. But here they are trying to be the second team in two years after Tampa Bay last year to win the Super Bowl in their home stadium. And we go back to that Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. And remember, they were an offensive juggernaut at that time, but only put up three points in that game. And they have been a little bit of a tough team to pin down over the last few years. They've had their shares of ups and downs, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But they've always had that great defense, and they're looking to ride that crew to a Super Bowl crown. And we will not have a return, so the first drive of the Super Bowl will begin at the 25. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They'll be led out by a longtime starter in the NFL, a former number one overall pick way back in 2009. It's Matthew Stafford. And he comes in off of a tremendous game in the NFC Championship round two weeks ago. This has been a team all season long that's really taken their identity from their quarterback, and he's been very vocal in days leading up to this game that he believes that this is their time, and he's going to do all he can to will them to a Super Bowl win. On first down, Stafford here. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Off the fake to Akers, here's Stafford. And his throw is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's the first carry of the game for Cam Akers. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. When you're lateral to the line of scrimmage, linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. And the defense, they'll spread the field, a dime package here on third and 12. Stafford going to give to Akers on the draw. Oh, fighting off the defender. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as they'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. As much as our praise team should be true to who they are, in this situation, I wonder if maybe they outguessed themselves a little bit. Third down seemed like an obvious passing situation. They chose to run it and then get anywhere close to first down. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Isaiah McKenzie is back deep for the Bills.
It'll be a net of 39. 41-yard punt, two on the return. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Well, the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. And he's been sensational all season long, but he saved his best work for the playoffs, leading his guys to the AFC Championship a couple of weeks ago. And now he knows what lies ahead. He's going to need to play a near-perfect four quarters of football to get his guys to the finish line. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 16. Off play action. Allen. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. Well, when you've got a quarterback like this dead to rights, you got to make sure to wrap up. Instead, though, he breaks free and off he goes. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact and in his mind just screamed out of my way and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact on the next gen stats. Throwing again on second and 10. Allen. It's a first down and more for Davis. And all the way up to the 37 yard line. The way the ways of quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play. Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now the first carry for Devin Singletary. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go. And sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Now Allen. This one caught by Crowder. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. That throw is not going to get him a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Allen off the play fake. Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 36. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. Oh, he shifts past him. And a nice little start as he's able to get this up to the 28. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Play action. Now it's Allen. That's going to be caught. 
And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Allen now looks to throw. And that will be incomplete. And what would the dive look that time on defense? Just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Tyler Bass out for the Bills' field goal. Spotted at the left, hash this from 45. And that's off the left upright, but it caroms right in. How about that? The kick is good. Three points, probably not going to win this Super Bowl, but at least you get something on the opening drop. And it's certainly not going to lose it. So the bottom line is, come away with the points now, come back and get greedy later, and try and put it in the end zone. So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. From the end zone, here comes Brandon Powell. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and 10. begin on the ground with Akers. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Next to receivers have spread the defense out and they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. Second down, they'll go with Akers again. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. An extra defensive back here for the Bills on third down. They'll try and run for this with Akers. And down he goes, but the stiff arm utilized effectively there, and it helps him move the sticks. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. They'll try the air now with Stafford. Throw left side, complete to Cup. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Nothing after one on EA Sports. 
The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a second and four coming up. They'll run a draw now with Akers. Able to avoid him at the 40. And he's going to have a Rams first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. A couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. They'll run this with Akers. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Here's second and a yard. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. Looking underneath, he's got Akers. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A big play that time on the catch and run. A great job there, and that old cliche, taking what the defense gives you, comes right into play. Nothing too out of the ordinary about the throw. Just a little dump off over the middle. But what is out of the ordinary is what he did with it after the catch. Not only did he grab the ball, but how about the significant yardage he picked up after he pulled it in? Play action, Stafford. Rush coming, and he's taken down. That sack by Tremaine Edmonds. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion now. Finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford. He'll get this to Akers out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. Touchdown, Rams! With a first touchdown of this Super Bowl and a long one at that. And the Rams have taken the lead. When you give up a long touchdown drive, you're looking for a silver lining. In this case, it's the fact that your offense had a chance to rest, and now they can come out in the field charged up and ready to go. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Now after the touchdown, ready to boot it away, Riley Dixon. Isaiah McKenzie now on the return. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30.
The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. To throw again on second down. Allen. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Heavy set out there on third and one. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. That was a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Allen going deep for Diggs. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. A deep ball down that right sideline, and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. To throw, it's Allen. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. The Bills on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and ten. To the air. Allen. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him. And they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. Back deep, Brandon Powell. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the Rams will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and ten. Matthew Stafford and the rest of the Rams offense set to take over once more. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And he is going to score. It's a pick six and a Bills touchdown. What a moment for him, a pick six in the Super Bowl. You think about some of the big pick sixes over the history of this huge game. 
I remember because I was watching with a lot of Colts fans, Tracy Porter picking Peyton Manning to get the Saints' first title. Yeah, that one pretty much sealed the deal for New Orleans as well. But I got to go back a ways because, you know, unfortunately, I'm considerably older. Herb Adderley, the Green Bay Packers, got it all started. The first pick six, Super Bowl II against the Oakland Raiders, and some of the better ones that were out there. You might remember Dwight Smith of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had two in one game when they won their Super Bowl championship against Rich Gannon in Oakland. You mentioned Tracy Porter already. How about James Harrison to the Steelers? You remember that one? 100 yards right before the half ended. That was a big time play. But for me, the absolute classic, Willie Brown in slow motion. Mm against the Vikings for the Raiders. The grand old man, Willie Brown, 75 yards. You recall him all, and what a play here. Another pick six in the Super Bowl. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here comes Matthew Stafford now to lead his offense back out there. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing. So he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to right the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's Stafford. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. Boy, that was certainly well-read defensively, and the key to any screenplay is space to work, and there was none to be found there, and they tackle him for just a short gain. The Rams on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and four. Back to throw, Stafford. And yeah, that is incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll punt it away for the second time. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a on, single man. yard on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 26. Throwing to start the drive. Allen eluding the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Two minutes on the clock in the second quarter of this Super Bowl.
A reminder coming up at intermission, we'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Jonathan Coachman and the crew in Orlando for our EA Sports halftime report. Allen's throw taken in there by Crowder. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Allen going to try and throw on third down. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And he is going to have a Bills let's first go, down go, as they're able go. to convert by plenty there on third and one. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. Here's Allen on first and ten. It's caught by Davis. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Throwing on first down is Allen. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Second down and three. Now Allen again. Out to the left, he's got his tight end Knox. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're gonna go with the football. I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. That's it, ready? You got it. After review the play, ruling on the field the same. Ready? Ready? Allen to throw once more. He will find Diggs in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. Stephon Diggs there to make the grab. And the Bills will extend their lead. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And now to give us momentum going into the second half, give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And 
And they'll start at the 25 as Powell decides against returning it. Now the Rams going to take over late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. down at Stafford complete Jefferson the target and he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39 the Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free, and there's another example, another incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Stafford. That's into the hands of Akers complete. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To the air again, Stafford. And this is caught inside the five. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. A big play that time through the air. 31 yards. This defense is definitely reeling a little bit now. Back-to-back -back big plays given up. And you know what's all defenses talk about. How do you limit that? Instead, they got hit by one-two punch those last couple of plays. And now they've got their backs to the goal line. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Stafford now to throw. And this is caught. He's got a touchdown, L.A. Allen Robinson as the first half is winding down. And the Rams are able to come into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is down to a field goal. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Returning it, Isaiah McKenzie. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. come to the line to start their next drive and we'll see what they opt to do with just 14 seconds remaining until intermission and they're just going to run it here up the middle and he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run it's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down 
So we've come upon halftime in the big one, the Super Bowl. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Bills. And even though they've got a halftime lead, they're likely devising ways as we speak to try and get a little more production from their passing game. Meanwhile, for the Rams, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. These two teams sat through a longer than usual 30 minute wait, but we're back in action here in this Super Bowl. McKenzie returning it. And his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line. Let's go. Let's go. And the Bills offense set to take over to begin quarter number three. And I think you'd have to say their coaching staff, all things considered, had to be pleased with their performance in the first half of this Super Bowl. Definitely pleased, doing their best not to show it to their team, of course, because as you and I both know, their mantra all season long has been finish. Get the job done. They know how close they are to lifting that trophy. One more solid half of football, and they can do exactly that. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. And that is caught. It's Davis. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. A give to Cook out of the gun. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown, because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well, because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Second and two. Again, it's Cook. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, boys. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. That's what we are. Play action. Allen. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. A loss of four that time on the sack, and it brings up second. Well, on that one, they, they go with the play fake CD, but I don't think anybody really was fooled. All eyes were fixated on the quarterback, and they got him to the ground. And to run this play successfully, you've got to make sure that everyone is doing their part. You actually have to sell this play. You've got to sell the run action. Otherwise, why do you stop at the running back? You just run straight for the quarterback and put him on the ground. After the sack on first down, Allen, throw right side, caught by Davis. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Now Allen. 
Going deep for Diggs. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try and throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt, and this one is no good. He missed it, and this score will stay right where it is. And now let's look at the quarterback, Matthew Stafford, in our player spotlight. And I don't know what more they need to see of him than what we're going to see in this player montage. He's been great. Why aren't they winning this game, I guess, is the question. It is a good question, isn't it? Remember the time we spent with them in practice beforehand and had that little twinkle in his eye where he thought, hey, we can, we can get some bombs in this game. We can get deep, and that's exactly what's going on. But I don't think he thought if they could do that, that they'd be on the losing end. They might need more of this air raid attack. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. On first down, they'll start out with Akers. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Working with a second and three. Now it's Stafford. Got a man open, it's Tyler Higby. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot. Defensively, how do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. Credit the sack to Von Miller. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I can dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford. Man open is Robinson. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. From the red zone now, Stafford. That is caught inside the five. Touchdown, Tyler Higby. A 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams have regained the lead in the second half of this Super Bowl. Quarterback sat in that pocket, could have had a ham sandwich. He had all day to throw the ball, and because of that, it works out for the offense with a score. Regular mustard or Dijon? Dijon. Okay, either way, you're exactly right. Had all the time he needed to find his man open downfield. Gay is on for the point after. It's up and good to make it 21-17. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles.
Now after the touchdown, ready to boot it away, Riley Dixon. On the return, it's McKenzie. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up this. shop at the 23-yard line. Josh Allen leads the offense out for their next possession. He's hoping to channel his first half play. They had the lead at halftime, was playing well. Flip the script here in the third quarter a little bit. I think he misses the Pee Wee days, you know, <laughs> when you just got the orange slice yeah. at halftime, right? Yeah. And remember, weren't any real adjustments then, right? You weren't looking at some tape, right? You weren't looking at stuff off of the, the surface tablets. He just went back out and played. Right now, maybe the adjustments have caught up to him. Well, we'll see. Maybe he just needs a couple orange slices here for this drive. The Cook getting the call there on first down as he works his way forward for a nice gain of five. Nice, satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. Pressure comes, and down he goes. It's a loss of a yard, so they'll wind up crediting him with a sack, and it brings up third down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Throwing his Allen on third. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll kick it away for the second time. A well-hit ball there, 50 yards on the punt, three on the return. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. Getting set to go again, Matthew Stafford trots back onto the field. And after trailing at halftime, he's got his guys in the lead, three touchdowns. His hot play from the first half, it's continued here in the third quarter. And that's what you love to see, is that things didn't cool off at the halftime, didn't have that sense of self-satisfaction. I've played a great game so far, I'm good continuing to play well, obviously wants to win. Yeah, now they've turned a deficit into a lead. Now a first down throw, Stafford. Open man is Higby, the tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This is it! This is it! When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Third quarter of the biggest spectacle in sport, the Super Bowl. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Second and 10. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw pulled in by Jefferson. Touchdown! Fourth touchdown pass of the game for Matthew Stafford. And the Rams will extend their third quarter lead here in this Super Bowl. Well, like so many wide receivers, he is a threat with the ball in his hands, and he's able to do his damage here after the catch. And I caught a quick glimpse of him before the ball was snapped, and there was something about his body language where you could tell early in this play, he wasn't just thinking first down. He was thinking end zone, and he got there. And you can see the distance traveled there after the catch on the next-gen stats. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 11.
Now after the touchdown, ready to boot it away, Riley Dixon. McKenzie returning it. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Buffalo set to get the football back here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Allen off the play fake. And he will slide to a halt with a penalty marker down on the play. Well, they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You should gonna pick up a holding call. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Here's Hallett. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for them. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. Now Allen. They'll find Gabriel Davis. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. The Bills have the football, but they trail here as we begin quarter number four. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Allen. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended target there was Gabriel Davis, but it's going to be second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. To throw, it's Allen. Working the middle here, that's complete to Knox, the tight end. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle, that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To the air, Allen. 
flush to his right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Throwing now is Allen. He's got the hook up with Diggs. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10, marking down at the 9. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Allen now looks to throw. Incomplete. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. Toward the pylon. Caught. Touchdown, Bills. Jamison Crowder. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Bills have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. So now an important conversion attempt here as the Bills line up to go for two. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And they'll start at the 25 as Powell decides against returning it. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And the tension ratcheting up all around. A one-score game, fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. This is what you folks came for. Every play with a potential to win or lose a title as they look to drain some time off this clock. Stafford on first down. That'll be caught. It's Cup. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Oh. 
So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 46. Now Stafford. And he's got this to Jefferson. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Off the fake to Akers, here's Stafford. And that'll be caught by Cup, and taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. A good rally to the football, keeps him to only a yard and it's second down. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. Still nine remaining on second down. Stafford looks to throw again. And he's got it. That's cut for a Ram touchdown. Matthew Stafford does it again. Five touchdown passes. And the Rams are starting to pull away in the fourth quarter of this Super Bowl. And that's certainly an important touchdown there and makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, no lead is safe in this one with the way these two offenses have lit up the scoreboard. I would imagine that on their sidelines, they're both yelling at their defenses, hey, you want to get involved here? One big play from you, that could win the game for us. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Now after the touchdown, ready to boot it away, Riley Dixon. This fielded right at the goal line. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Buffalo offense back out, ready to go. And we're at the time in this Super Bowl where, look, they need points. And they need them badly. Trailing here in the fourth quarter as they begin this drive first and ten. right side and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44 you cannot write these guys off just yet not with a quarterback like that under center you mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off not yet not a chance not with him we've seen it too many times first down and they're going to throw with Allen. He'll buy some time right. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. 
going. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Well, you don't expect too many quarterbacks to be adept at breaking away from would-be tacklers, but this is uncommonly good right here as he's able to get away. Yeah, and at the risk of sounding just a little bit trite, this is just a tackle that needs to be made. It's one thing when you've got a bruising 230-pound running back coming your way, but when it's a quarterback who's running for his life, your teammates will tell you, you've got to get him on the ground. Looking to throw again on second down. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. He couldn't get away. He'll wind up losing a dozen yards, a 12-yard loss, and it brings up third. How about that partner? His second sack of the game, and that puts him in some pretty good company. 17 guys have had two sacks in the previous 52 Super Bowls, but only three have had the record number of three sacks in this game. And we've got the list here. If he gets another one and everyone behaves nicely, we might just list those out for him. So after the sack, Allen and the Bills with work to do on third and long. So the shotgun snap to Allen. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's McKenzie. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So it's Bills football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Allen. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Throwing is Allen. And he'll get this underneath the Singletary. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 20-yard line. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Here's Allen. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. I think he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Now Allen. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And the Bills are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game.
Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Here's Allen to throw it. And that will be caught, but out of the end zone, says the field judge. It's ruled incomplete. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. Third and goal, and keep in mind, very possibly four-down territory. From the gun, it's Allen. And this is caught, so it's a late touchdown, but maybe too late. Still a little time left on the clock, however. Coming from where they were, they knew this was going to be tough, but they got the touchdown. Now they need the miracle, the onside kick and a little extra. Yeah, and you have to get the onside kick and not have the ball bounce around a lot and eat up time. You want to be able to grab it, possess it, and get your offense out there for what you just termed a miracle yeah. last chance. Tyler Bass now for the point after. And this is back to a five-point game. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. So 15 ticks remaining as they line up for the onside kick. And the Rams have got it. And that should just about seal this one. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. for this one final knee to put a bow on this title bout. The Rams have won the Super Bowl and they will get the Lombardi Trophy. And their remarkable season ends in the most remarkable of ways. They get to put next to their name Super Bowl champion. And they can't ever take that away, can they? Nope. That lasts forever. So good to see the emotion when it's all said and done. You see the hugs. You see the guys sharing the collective happiness. Makes me want to carry you around a little bit on my shoulders to celebrate the triumph. And congratulations to them. A fantastic season.